Good morning guys and welcome back to a new installment of this video series me getting ready in a hotel room and then just walking you through a topic that crosses my mind or that you have said. So this is my makeup bag. Uh, today I'm in a Hilton and uh, I'm about to go have breakfast and then travel to another city but I thought I would address one of the topics that um, came up quite a few times. I think it's just because I come across as very um let's say comfortable speaking in public so quite a few of you asked me how do you handle working on presentations and public speaking and things like that and i start with my everyday makeup so you're gonna get bored of this but fine so this is the ordinary foundation uh it's their foundation line is called the colors and um i really like it i have a couple backups of it I will probably finish all the other foundations that I have and then I do this but I did have a couple instances where I had to buy foundation early because I was traveling last minute or things like that but anyway to me public speaking is essentially a muscle that you have to work kind of like um, any other sport where you need a certain dexterity or to work a specific muscle group some people have better starting points than others but there is no way you cannot work on it so for me, I'm one of those people who are actually very comfortable speaking in public um, in contrast with me being an extreme introvert. So if you put me in front of a stadium, I would probably talk. But if you put me one-on-one -on -one with somebody I don't know, I will just... Not one-on-one. -on -one. Even one-on-one, -on -one, I can do a little bit okay. But if you put me in a dinner party, I'm going to be the one sitting in the corner, not talking to everyone. So definitely start by knowing what is your starting point because we're all different personalities. We've been exposed to different things in certain cultures. You're more encouraged as a kid in kindergarten to, you know, put your head, uh, hand up and, and ask questions, etc. And speak in front of everybody. Whereas in other cultures, it's just asked to sit crossed like this. So now that we get this uh, out of the way, regardless of what is your starting point, how do you actually improve and become a better public speaker? So one of the first things that people tend to underestimate is if you are to speak in public, you want to be as comfortable as possible. So for me, the number one thing is a comfortable outfit. So that would probably mean it needs to be something that fits. As you can see, I've just only used one pop. It needs to be something that fits really, really well. It fits me like a glove. I don't want to be in clothing that... Uh, is a little bit tight or where I feel like I'm stuffed like a sausage. I also don't want to be uh, wearing clothing that is distracting, you know, like where I have to fix a hem every now and then, where maybe there is something dangling or where um, I have to adjust the, the belt or something like that. So I just need a, um, an outfit where when I wear it, I just completely forget about it. So that's the first thing for me. Then the second thing, I'm gonna go with the powder. This is the Mac um, Mac Studio Fix in C7, and I'm just using these tiny, real technique brushes. The second th thing about the outfit is that it should make you feel a million bucks. So I have a, what I call my little uh, uniform. So whenever I go to work today, I'm going to be very casual. Matter of fact, what I'm wearing is actually a Cezanne. Um, this is a Cezanne sweater, it's cashmere, it's a collaboration with Eric Bompard and it has a very tiny little detail with the button here and then a pencil skirt from Windsor which is actually a very stretchy jersey material it's because I'm going to be traveling for hours afterwards so I thought, you know what, I want to be comfortable also, I'm here for a sort of very laid back thing so it's not client facing or anything so I'm just kind of dressed in very comfortable outfits and I have a combination of this uh, in different colors so I have three variations of uh, three colors of this skirt and three colors of this top and that's what I will be wearing for the next two weeks just alter alternating between the colors so once you feel very comfortable you have to also take factor in the fact that you want to look like a million bucks regardless of how simple this outfit is the quality of the material, the way it shows my uh, tiny waist, the way it covers my knees and things like that, I just feel like it is my million dollar kind of uh, outfit and I just feel very nice in it. Sometimes when I used to have steer calls, which is a steering committee meeting, where essentially you meet with uh, CEO and uh, CFO and other people from the board, um, and as a consultant, it is one of the toughest things that you have to do because you have to present and be grilled by these people. 
for my circles I used to have also like a favorite fragrance that I would wear or favorite piece of jewelry very tiny but that just gives me that extra boost of confidence so now you have works on the external part obviously if you're a woman I assume that you would know what is your tolerance to heels um, well I also know a man who used to wear heels but um, just trying to give generic advice but for me I don't do heels I just the best that I could do would be block heels but for me it will show that I'm not comfortable if I'm wearing pumps I love how they look on other women I actually even love how they look on me I just don't love how they make me feel so I have to skip then uh, so that's for appearance I'm gonna use the sleek divine palette and I'm gonna go with this color so I'm just gonna pack it on my eyes as I talk about preparation because that's the second point the thing is once you have your appearance covered, what you want to do is actually make sure that you don't start stuttering in the middle of the presentation, you don't feel like super um, awkward or uh, just have a, a, you know, how sometimes you just freeze and you stop talking. To you it seems like it's many, many minutes, but it's only a few seconds. Though, there is a time after which it becomes just very, very awkward. Anyway, preparation. Don't over prepare. But don't come unprepared. The thing is, it takes a certain level of skill to be able to speak when you haven't prepared a single thing. You will have to do it a few times because sometimes you just caught off guard. But ideally it would happen after you have been um, used to speaking quite a few times with little preparation. But in the normal case, you're given at least a day's notice that you are going to be talking, probably a lot more. And so what you want to do is not over-prepare because you have these people who actually write down their entire speech on, on like, uh, little cards and then they start having cues, etc., etc. I reckon if that is your job and you have to do different speeches, it might actually help in preparing it. But I think that once you over-prepare, you're more prone to freezing. Because the thing is, if you have every single paragraph that you're going to say, the moment you, you just mess up or you forget a sentence or you forget a transition or something like that, then everything is messed up and you're trying to go back to wherever you have left. What I have learned over the years is that people don't know and don't care. So they don't know whether that was the transition you wanted to give, whether that was the example you were meant to give, whether you skipped an example or something or an anecdote or something like that. Because guess what? They have no access to whatever your speech was or your intervention. So it is 100% up to you how it comes across. So don't fret too much about forgetting things. And this is why my best tip is actually know your introduction so whatever topic I'm talking about I just know what is the first thing that's going to come out of my mouth and what is the last thing I want to close on just by knowing the first impression in the lasting note uh, I can just work on everything in the middle I have probably three points that I want to make come across and that's about it and then you just practice this but worth noting that I do practice my entrance like my very first sentence and my very last one just because that's where most of the stress comes up. Um, I never look stressed, but actually my entire body temperature raises, my heartbeat raises, and I get like a shot of adrenaline. Now, I don't do that on purpose. It's just something that I realize after fact. So usually while I'm doing my speech, I'm fine. It's only after I finish that I realize how much my heart is racing. But for me, it's like a lot of excitement. Um, so you want to be aware of this, you want to be aware of your hands shaking. If you have very uncontrollably shaking hands, the fact of holding a paper, it will show more. So even if people typically say that you need to have an open body language, if you're going to be like this, it might be worth just holding your hands like this as you speak, just for a few seconds while you stabilize them, and then start having the more open body language. Uh, you know your body better, you know your reactions better, practice in front of a few friends, and don't worry about it. Now, in terms of the tonality, how you sound, etc., one mistake that a lot of women make is that they go on extremes. So either they try to be very stern because they're told that when you are, when you look nice or smiley or something like that, then it just undermines your authority. So instead, they have that picture at resting face, and it just closes you off. I mean, nobody wants to listen to somebody who sounds very, very. 
uh, stern. Like for me now, I'm not really smiling, but it's probably because I just woke up and because I'm late and I didn't have breakfast yet. After I eat, I'm usually a very smiley, happy person. I'm like, mm. I'm like the sweetest person ever. If I haven't eaten, you don't even want to be near me because I'm a monster. But like even my colleagues know this is a joke. Um, but the thing is, um, there is no reason for you to just go with a closed body language just to assert um, your um, your authority. On the other extreme, you know how I always say that women should be tilting their head and smiling and being very nice. Uh, there is no politically correct way of saying this, but I have noticed a lot of my Asian descent colleagues doing this a lot. The smiling, tilting the head and, and just saying yes even before they want to say no. Um, it irritates me, but I also understand that it's cultural. I've had conversations with ladies who actually have the entire conversation like this. And it just kills me. Um, I used to have a teacher. She didn't teach me a class, but like she was in my college who, we, who used to do all the time. That she, she taught me one class, actually, I remember she was, she was almost like... That, in that context, that was quite encouraging because she was a teacher, she had people who barely spoke English, and she was just reinforcing the fact that despite your terrible accent, all the mistakes that you're making, I'm listening to you, I'm really paying attention, I'm not looking at anybody else than you. So she always looked like this as she spoke. And in that context, it was okay. In the context of business, I just... Oh, I just can't do it. I just, I just can't. So just find your middle ground. The middle ground that actually looks natural. Because the thing is that you don't want to force a smile if that's not your natural face. But at the same time, you don't want to force, you know, a closed face if you'd be more comfortable smiling. Because nobody hates a genuine smile. One thing that people forget is that there is no right or wrong way to do public speaking. The thing is, a lot of women, most women, have not been in the spotlight for public speaking. And that's been the case for centuries. So, when it comes to men, you do have quite a few role models. You have different styles, you have different patterns. You have, for example, the wave pattern that Martin Luther King used. You know, you're like, I have a dream, I have a dream, blah, blah, blah. You know, just like bringing back the same topic that, that's just... Uh, you. There you have these techniques that people have studied over the de decades and that apply to a lot of men. The thing is that having so few women in leadership, you just don't have that variety of role models. So feel free to create your own style. You don't have to sound like Michelle Obama. You don't have to sound like Brene Brown. Um, just find your own style. I need to do my eyeliner off camera because I have to go and stick my face into a mirror. That's how the only way I can do it. So I'll be back in a sec. Right, I'm back. That is the most botched eyeliner because I did it in two seconds. But anyway, I'm in Germany. The base is very, very low. So I need to just do my mascara. I'm using the Essence one. I really like it. And my eyeliner was from Ico. I got it for free in a Look Fantastic box. Not when I technically not for free. I paid for that box, but... So, Essence Mascara, I think it costs something like £3, it's called the Super Care Volume Mascara. It's very eye-opening, and I actually just use it to clean the fallouts from uh, applying eyeshadow on my, on my eyes. Typically, I don't wear eyeshadow when I don't have time, but um, I, I really want to, you know, rock in this training. Because working from 9am to 9pm... It's just, it's a walk in the park for me because I, I do so much, such longer, much, 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 much longer hours. So that for me is almost like a work vacation. So I'm pretty excited about it actually. Um, so what was I saying? Find your own style. Um, practice. Practice makes perfect. As I said at the beginning of this video, public speaking, like every other thing, is like a muscle that you need to be working. So don't worry about it and just have fun. Now, there is one trick which might be a little bit, require a little bit more preparation and a bit more intention setting that I have done once and that completely helped me, which is if you have a very important presentation and you're willing to invest the time and energy, prepare whatever you're meant to say, film yourself and watch yourself again. There is nothing worse than watching yourself make a presentation where you thought you aced it but actually you didn't 
um, one of the things that I have noticed, I, I have done this with myself and a couple of friends, and I have noticed that what they used was, a lot was filler words like um, uh, uh, like, 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 and things like that. And it was just very annoying. And then I had another guy who actually, his hands were clamped like this. Uh, public school boy. Very, very typical. And then I had another one who was pacing back and forth. So when we did that exercise and we were watching each other, it was just fun to poke fun at each other and just say, look, this is what you're doing, that's how irritating. And then watching it back on video was pretty useful because then you get to see what you look like to the others from the outside. Um, in my case, the issue was that I didn't point to what I was saying. So you know how I would always have a slide behind me or like I would describe something? My hand gestures weren't big enough. So what I had been doing now consciously is that just being aware that it's okay to take space as a woman. It's okay to just expand and you know like have these big gestures. So that's what I have started doing. I'm going with a blush. This is a very new blush. I just got it yesterday from the airport. It's called Cranberry Crush. And it's from number seven. That's the, the Boots private label. And the thing is that I was buying... Oh, wow. It's, it is quite pigmented. Oh, and this is so cute. So I was buying some liquid lipsticks because last time I did a flash trip to Morocco and I swatched the lipstick from, from Sleek. And it was out of stock and I was just, I just had it on my mind so this time when I was at the airport and my flight was delayed I decided to still buy it because two weeks later I was still thinking about it and I swatched it yesterday I had two showers so far and it's still not gone um, obviously on my mouth it would probably not last as long but still I mean two showers and that thing is still there so I'm very excited to give it a try I ended up buying two colors and today I'm gonna go for the for this one just because it's the first day I'm meeting Germans, so they're pretty conservative. Most people are gonna be relatively business casual because this is meant to be business casual. Let me just you know wipe the um, lip balm and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I actually also have this little uh, mini foulard. So the thing is, because I buy now. You know how there was a time where I bought, I bought a lot from Uniqlo and a lot from uh, different brands like that? Well, recently, two or three months ago, I discovered the brand Cezanne, which I absolutely love. I just feel like the, everything that they do just fits. Like, I love their style. They call it Parisian style. I haven't really lived in Paris. I don't really know exactly how Parisians dress. Um, and I'm not necessarily a Francophile. I don't necessarily love... The French culture, but the style just works for me. So if that is French style, maybe. But I love it. I think my style would be a combination of French and and, and British with a touch of um, African. Okay, so it goes on smooth. I did not apply a ton, just because I'm very wary of these uh, of these inks. We'll see, it's probably gonna try and um, not much. But yeah, so this is what I wanted, all I wanted to say about um, about public speaking. Practice makes perfect. Don't forget that it's a muscle. As with every race, you don't wanna start with a marathon. You can start with a little 5K or with even just walking. So practice in small, non-intimidating settings. Try to have, you know, little toasts at dinner. Try to have, um, uh, to present a few people to other people. That's a sort of public speaking. If you are at an event, try to, you know, play host a little bit. Don't don't overshadow the host. But, you know, like try to just introduce people who you haven't met to other people. Things like that. Um, and I think that it's just one of those things that you have to do it a few times and then it just becomes easier every time. So, this thing is drying. I like it. I like the scent of it. I'm going to just apply a very tiny perfume. So this is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. Just a, a deluxe sample. And then on my fingernails I have 
this uh, it's by Essie. Hold on a second. I just bought it also yesterday or a couple of days ago. So Essie recently came up with this line of products called um, Treat Love and Color, and uh, it's just you just apply this as two layers on your nails. I have posted on it on Instagram. A couple of you guys already bought it, so I really like that. Um, I had bought um, sort of a beige color. So this is a very light pink. So these are very corporate friendly. Um, yeah, I just applied it yesterday after I arrived. I'm gonna just try to find a bobby pin just to pin this little bit of hair down. In two weeks, I'm going to get a haircut, so I cannot wait to do that. But in the meantime, I just have to deal with this. So that's life. All right. So that's it for me today. I today's topic was public speaking. Next topic is probably going to be. We'll see. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you very soon on my channel. Take care.